Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas's Anglican Church in Stittsville, Ontario. My name is William Passmore and I'm a lay reader at St. Thomas's and it's great to welcome you this morning. Shall we gather to worship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen a reading from the book of Genesis Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran he came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the Sun had set Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it out for a pillar, poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I f flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, 
It is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. While everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, who did not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? 
He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burnt, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burnt up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How is your garden growing this summer? In this time of COVID-19, many more people have taken up gardening, or have significantly expanded their existing garden. So our Gospel reading must come as a surprise when we learn of the Master's instruction not to gather up the weeds. This runs contrary to horticultural logic, where we diligently weed our gardens, in order that the effort of fertilizing and watering gives us the most beautiful flowers and the most prolific vegetables. However, from an agricultural perspective, this parable makes perfect sense. True farmers spray their crops to minimize weeds, but it is impractical to pull out weeds in the wheat fields once the plants start to grow. The fields are too large. In Jesus' private explanation of the parable, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, who have chosen to follow him. The weeds are those who are described as the children of evil. Most, if not all of you, will, I, will identify with the good seed. The good seed is a metaphor for us as Christians. The good seed grows alongside each other, but they also grow alongside the weeds. Both the wheat and the weeds are part of the created world, and Paul in his epistle tells us that creation is waiting with eager longing for the revelation of the children of God. So the fate of creation is to a certain extent dependent on the behavior of the wheat. So there are three themes to explore. Firstly, our relationship with other wheat plants. Secondly, our relationship with the weeds. And thirdly, our impact on the created world. The wheat does not grow alone. It grows close together. Now, I am relieved that nowhere in these verses does it suggest that the wheat is sown in groups of 10, 50, or 100, and six feet apart. They grow together, and that is a model for us as Christians. Correctly now, we are physically distancing, and this has been difficult, for we have not been together physically for four months. An upside for me, has been and is a joy to be on the phoning ministry with the opportunity to talk with many of you. Some of you I know quite well, but with others, it has been an opportunity to get to know you. However, there are wheat plants that we are not aware of. Many have been encouraged to join us on social media for our online Sunday services. Statistics show that online church attendance has more than doubled physical attendance. This is wonderful as we welcome those who are joining us online. Many other churches are having similar experiences. In one Western country, statistics show that one in four citizens are attending online, with one in three attending in the 18 to 30 age group. The same statistics suggest 80% of those joining online live within walking or driving distance of our churches. Since COVID-19 appeared, there is an increased desire to connect. More than ever, there is a need and opportunity to let others know that we have a faith in our Lord Jesus and what that faith means to us. 
This could be scary. St. Paul says, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to daughtership and sonship. The spirit cries, Abba Father, Daddy. By connecting with them physically or electronically, we can be a source of mutual encouragement to one another. This may bring us into contact with weed plants that are in other denominations. Great initiatives of the church come about when we work together with other Christians at all levels in the Christian church. I've just finished reading the biography of Hudson Taylor, who took the gospel to inland China. He worked in conjunction with Anglicans, Methodists, Lutherans, Baptists and others from several different countries. The creators of the Alpha Course reached across national and denominational boundaries, so the Alpha Course is available in most denominations and in many countries. As the adventure of COVID-19 continues, let us look out for others who we can encourage and be encouraged by. So what is our relationship with the weeds? Please forgive the pun, but this passage seems very cut and dried. It's a language that is very hard for us to hear in the 21st century. We are loath to be judgmental, and we can be very critical of others when they are judgmental. And with good reason, for if I point my finger at someone for being evil or for doing wrong, look where the other three fingers are pointing, right back at me. So are we ready to reach out to the weeds? There is some difference of opinion by commentators as to what is meant by the weeds. Are they thistles or dandelions? Or is it the Near Eastern plant called darnel? Darnel is a plant that is similar to wheat. It is so similar that you can only tell the difference when the ears of wheat start to ripen. In rabbinic schools, it was regarded as degenerate wheat. The original parable creates a very predictable fate for the weeds. But in Jesus' private explanation, he says, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. He talks about the removal of causes of sin, which allows for repentance and a turning to Christ for those who do not know him. Our psalm further supports this when the writer asks that any wickedness in me would be revealed and he would lead me in the way that is everlasting. The parable makes the harvest seem like an instantaneous event at the end of the age. But in the rest of scripture, there is a reference to the last days. And the last days cover the period from Jesus' ascension to his second coming. So this gives opportunity for the weeds to change. The weeds that are destroyed refer to those who are determined to resist God for their whole life. Does this seem unfair? We are not robots. God gave us the free will to love him and follow him, or to go our own way. God respects our decision, even though he reaches out to us in love and compassion for us to follow him. If we do not follow him, then clearly we want to be separate from him after death. The fire that Jesus talks about is the permanent decision to separate ourselves from God. But remember the thieves that were crucified with Christ. We would judge them both as weeds. However, one thief acknowledged Jesus and turned to him in his last minutes. And Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. He was a weed and became a wheat. It's interesting to note that the darnel, the weed, has many similarities to the wheat. They look similar, they both produce seeds. It could be said that they have common interests. And so with others who we meet who may not have no faith, they share interests that we can identify with. Hobbies, work, family situations, neighbors, travel interests, and so on. These all become areas of common interest where we can share our ideas, likes, experiences, and opinions. Through the relationships, we can share what our faith means to us and commend it to them. Another area of common interest is the environment and our impact on the created world and the influence of COVID-19 on the environment. With the dramatic reduction in mankind's air travel, road travel and shipping, many have noticed that in our larger cities, the sky has been bluer 
the smog is disappearing. In a recent edition of Maclean's, there have been articles about the significant returning of life to coral reefs in the South Pacific, as well as a reduction in risk of ships colliding with whales in the North Atlantic. Are these small examples of what St Paul said when he said, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time, for, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. So, I believe that the call for us as Christians is to encourage us to be revealed. The world is waiting for us to reach out. As a leading Christian said, the Holy Spirit is much more concerned for our family, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbours and others that we meet than we are. We can show how important God is in our lives. We can help others to connect to the body of Christ, the Church. So in conclusion, be encouraged to reach out to other Christians and get to know them. Remember, 80% of those joining us online live near to us. Get to know Christians from other local churches who may live on your street or in your retirement home. COVID-19 has given me the opportunity to meet with some Christians on my street and to get to know them much better. We can help and encourage them. They can encourage us. Make sure that we are living out our lives to those who do not yet have faith, seeking the opportunity to share our experience of the Lord with them. Now, in this homily, I have assumed that most, if not all of you, would identify as the wheat, growing in God's field. But it may be that some of you are not so sure. If you identify with more with the Darnell, the weeds, that, the weeds, then I want to tell you that God loves you and he sent his son to die for you on the cross to remove the barrier of sin and to bring you into a relationship with him. If that is you, I commend this prayer to you. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness, and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or mind. We especially pray for all the frontline workers as we work our way through the current COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. And grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, for ever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for worshipping with us at St. Thomas's. We look forward to seeing you online next week.
Good morning. A few announcements this morning. Uh, the first is the diocese itself has uh, gotten to the point where we're talking about reopening. Assuming uh, things continue on the same line, we will be opening for limited in-person services starting uh, the first week of September and we're working through the details. As you can imagine, there are a lot of health and safety issues that we need to address, so uh, please stay tuned. Uh, we have had a number of parishioners who have been producing masks. They asked us to announce that there are still a number of them available. If you want to find out uh, more about that, please contact the church office. The fundraising committee is also uh, collecting recipes and associated anecdotes for St. Thomas Cookbook to be produced sometime in the fall. If you have a favorite recipe and a story to go with it, again, please contact the office. If you're watching this early on Sunday morning, we encourage you to join us for a virtual coffee hour at 11 o'clock on Zoom. The details are distributed through the weekly email. Uh, please continue to watch on, on Sunday mornings. We will be doing the, uh, the online services for the foreseeable future. So at, even as we do a limited opening, we appreciate that we're reaching out to a number of people for whom in-person worship is not going to be an option for the next little while. So we're going to be keeping up the service that you're seeing here. In terms of prayers this week, going through our, our parish family, we pray for Linda Stevenson, Gloria Stewart, Jennifer Ant and Anna Stiptek, Nancy Stiptek, and Heli Sullivan. And we also uphold those who are sick and in need of healing. Mary, Michael, Peter, Deline, Bonnie, and Lil. And uh, thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If you found us useful and you want to support our ministry, we have a number of ways that you can support us. Please contact the church office and we'd be happy to explain them to you. God bless.